Right then, in this video I'm going to do, uh, I've been thinking about doing this one for a while, a series on kits we can buy and make. Right, I'm going to start off with a bottle stopper. Uh, I'm also going to make the mandrel for the bottle stopper. Uh, if you can save a few quid you might as well. Uh, right, a bit of advice on these things. I was talking to... It was a couple of years ago, I was talking to a guy at a wine and art night and the uh, subject of the bottle stoppers actually came up and he advised me, now I don't drink at all so I have no idea on this so I'm, I just think I'll buy what the expert told me uh, that uh, not to buy the ones that have chrome on them because apparently the wine, the fumes off the wine can affect the chrome and make it flake and it'll fall into the bottle and basically destroy the wine. He told me only ever to use the stainless steel ones. Okay, they're a couple of quid extra to buy the stainless steel ones. But I've said this before and I'll say it again and probably say it again. Your reputation is everything. If you sell somebody one of these and it destroys a good bottle of wine on them. Word of mouth is going to go around. And that customer is not going to come back to you. And neither will anybody who talks he talks to. Spend the extra couple of bob and get the stainless steel ones. It's worth it just for the peace of mind. Now, first thing I'm going to do with this is I need to size this end. Right? So what I've done is I've set up the calipers to fit that and now I'm going to size down this end to the same size as that bottle the stopper. So that's the first thing I'm going to go on. I'm turning this quite slow because I want control on it. I don't want to go too far. There's a good bit there. What I'm gonna do is point size just at the edge here. So if I get it wrong, I can just get rid of it and go again. Be very careful if you're using one of these. Don't put much pressure on it because the points will dig in on you. Right. Now just to make it easy on myself, I'm going to put a scoop in just down to meet that, just to get wood out of my way for later on. Now, the way I'm building this, I've seen on Stephen Ogle's channel, I'll put a link below of course, and I like the way he does it. Right. So first thing I'm going to do is drill out a hole for a tap. Uh, I 
happen to know that the bottle stoppers I'm using are M10. So I'm going to drill out the appropriate hole for the appropriate tap. The whole thing of this is to make sure it's straight. You do not want these things going in wrong. I think that should be well deep enough. Let's check this here. Get the layer. Yeah, that's well deep enough. Now, something that Stephen said in his video, which makes complete sense to me, is when he's using his taps, he puts them into his Jacob's truck because that guarantees everything is straight rather than trying to do it by hand. Uh, like, rather than trying to use the hand crank that comes with the tap. Right, so what he did was turned off the lead, right, and then leaving his banjo loose, right, he turned this by hand, just with pressure, and he's just pushed the banjo with his hand, so it goes in. As you can imagine, this takes a while. I'll just speed this up on the video. Right, now, some thin CA in there, just to uh, strengthen up those threads. Start the light up to spread that around in there so it goes everywhere. And then to get an M10, well, for me it's an M10, and screw it in. Make sure it's tight. Now we let that set up. And I'll be back in a minute. Right, after everything's set up, just cut it off. Right, and with a foil, just take the sharp edge off. Right, making sure not to damage those threads, whatever you do. Make sure the entry thread is clean. Bump just there. Right. Okay. Right. And there's your mandrel. Right. Now, next thing is take that off. Right. You'll need that later, and then pick whatever piece of wood you're using. Right. Now this is a piece of tiger. Right. It's got some sapwood on the end, which I don't want, so I'm putting it in this way. Right. And all I'm going to do is round this off. Well, it's this direction. All I'm going to do is round it off, drill it, and tap it. And I'll put, uh, and I'll start it out then. Right. Yep, just for safety, I'm going to bring the tail stock up. Right. So I'm rounding it off. Right. 
round us off. Yeah, we're round. Now I want to face it off and drill and tap it. You have to make sure the face on your mandrel and the face on your blank are dead flat or they won't match up properly. Yep. Give myself a starting point for the drill. And there we drill and tap that. Exactly the same as we did the other bit. Okay, and we have the threads cut in. Uh, same again. A little drop of thin CA in there. Harden those threads up. Spin the lead to make sure it goes round everywhere. Make sure you get nice hard threads. Spin the light and let it dry. Okay. I'll be back when it dries. Right, that should be well dry by now. Right, so we take that one off. Right, there we have drilled and tapped. Mouse taps. That looks clean. Right. Let me put the mandrel back on. Okay. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we put this on the mandrel. Right, I'm going to bring up the tail stock just for support just at the start. Now, we round this off. Right, we finish rounding this off. Let's size it. That is not sitting on that mandrel right. Just watch that if you're doing this. Just make sure it's sitting on that mandrel right or this is not going to turn you off. Right. Now we'll finish around on this off. Just to make it easy and get it out of the way. Even though we're not going to be using the full length of this. Well, so say I'm not going to be using the full length of this. Now what I want to do is get this end down to the size of that mandrel. But thinking about the shape as well. Wood is really dry, so I'm gonna give this a sharpen. Okay, right, right, we're back on the new fresh edge. Much better. Now, what I want to make sure of is that I don't 
go down far enough to cut that mandrel. So be very careful just to go level with the mandrel. Right, I'll just check that. I think I'm pretty much on it. I am. Now I just want to get a shape into the top of this. Now you can do these any shape, it's up to you. Um, you can get quite creative with them. Right, the things to watch are that you don't make them too top heavy so that they'll knock the bottle over. Like a bit, it'll, a full bottle will hold anything, but if, you, if you've only got a bit left in the end of a bottle and you make these too heavy, they're going to knock the bottle over. That and I've seen some of them where people get really fancy. I've seen them with finials on top. I've seen them with points on top. Most people, if they're closing a bottle of wine, and I've seen them do this with these, right? You know, I'll just use this block as an example. Right? Most people, what they do is they put it into there and they do that. They just tap it on the top. If you've got a point there, or a really thin finial, right? If it's a point, when they do that, they're going to hurt their hand. If it's a finial, okay, you might get somebody who's really, really careful, right? And it'll probably last. But the odds of a finial breaking on something that's being used regularly especially when people have a few on them is large right that's so try and make the top rounded so that people can actually do that and give somewhere for the fingers to grab so that when they're opening the bottle they can pull it right pretty is nice but they also have to be practical Yeah, let's continue with the shape of this. Right. Yeah. Do I want a sharp edge there? Yes, I do. I don't think else I want this looking like a door now, boy. If you have a look online at these, at designs and stuff, you'll see hundreds of designs, okay, for them. But something that you will notice is the gallery ones, right? The ones that are in galleries are always that shape. They've always got a rounded top on them, right? and somewhere for fingers to go. Right. Now we'll just sand that down. And what I'll do is I'll sand there down till it's exactly the same width as that mandrel. Right, so I'll be back then. Right then, it's sanded and finished. Just buffing off. Um, as I said, I said this in a lot of videos. If you've got pretty wood, there's no need to get fancy. Let the wood speak for itself. It's already pretty, and you're not going to beat it. 
so this one is basically just the shape didn't bore any lines into it or anything there was no need because yeah, it's uh, gorgeous in any way right. now we'll take it off the mantle now this is quite tight on this because as I said it's an M10 thread and I should actually be using an 8.4 mil drill bit but I brought my 8.4 mil drill bit a few weeks ago and the closest thing you get was an 8 um, normally I get weird sized drill bits from England but because of the Brexit thing nobody's exporting so I had to make do with an 8 so this is a little tight I got something to grab that on. Just now my hands on it, all that strong. Right. I was gonna have to get something to grab on top because I can't hold it. And there we go. One bottle stopper. Which I haven't got cranked down fully yet because I can't grip it right. Now, if this works right, it does. Right, the ones I use, once you get them screwed in, that unscrews. Why that's handy is every now and again these need to be washed. Right, and you don't want to be washing the wood parts. So, uh, that unscrews from there, and that is what you can wash, and the screw stays in there. Which is very handy. Right. And that just screws back on there. Right. And you have a nice pretty bottle scopper. And I said the only thing I'd say with these is spend the extra money and get the stainless steel ones. They have to be pretty but they also have to be practical so don't put a big point on the top of them right uh, as i said i'm going with the stainless steel ones because of what i was told by the wine guy so i hope you enjoyed that one and please subscribe to the channel and i'll uh, see you in the next one